views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome, friends, to the sixth annual Global Citizenship Gala. Woohoo! As many of you know, my name is Amanda Dubois Mwake, and I am the Director of International Programs and Community Engagement here at Lehman. This gala is known as the Parte of Lehman, and tonight shall be no different. While we are honoring the significant, significant contributions of our honorees and working hard to develop scholarships for our students who undoubtedly deserve the same chances to gain valuable experiences in global citizenship as their peers all over the country, leading to gainful employment, we know that that's important, but we also know that you are here to kick back, and to celebrate, and to enjoy the open bar, <laughs> and to bid on some fabulous silent auction items. A special welcome and thank you to our global corporate sponsors, the Office of the President of Lehman College, <clears throat> and Acacia Network. Both in their second year as corporate sponsors. To our honorees, TJ, Jackie, Marie, Yuri, Cyril, for all that you do to support global engagement. A special thank you to Teresita Levy, who is, yes, my mentor and our outstanding executive director who had the vision to join the forces of international student services, community engagement, and study abroad, all into one newly formed Office of International Programs and Community Engagement. What a team we have. This is the first year that I haven't had to like run around like a mad woman. We were done and ready at 4.30. I have never seen that in all six years because there weren't just three of us running around like maniacs. It was fabulous. Congratulations to our newest members of Lehman Life. Also a change because usually by now they've been meeting for three weeks and today was the first time they all met. So can we please have you stand if you are a newly selected Lehman Life member. <clears throat> all right, you guys can sit down. And how about our study abroad students? I know there's a whole table of Crete over there. Let's hear you guys. Let's have you stand up. Yes. Yes. Former Lehman Lifers, are you guys here? <laughs> they are always the loudest. And how about everybody in Peace Corps Prep? I know there's a bunch of you here for that too. Yeah. We've got our cheerleader for Lehman Peace Corps Prep over there. Um, we just completed our first year of Peace Corps prep the, as the only college in New York City to have a Peace Corps preparation program, so that's pretty exciting. <clears throat> Another special thank you to our provost, Peter Wosu, whose commitment, yes. <laughs> whose commitment to the internationalization of our campus at home and abroad is certainly something that I admire and appreciate, as I know many of us do. So I'd like to now ask Provost Wosu to come up to the podium and provide some welcoming remarks on behalf of the college. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for that warm introduction. I bring you greetings 
from President Daniel Lemons, who is unable to join us this evening. I also bring you greetings. On behalf of our faculty, our staff administration, and the more than 15,000 students who are studying today at Lehman College. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you at this joyous occasion to celebrate the accomplishment of our study abroad programs. Indeed, today's celebration, today's celebration is a further demonstration of our college's commitment to the promotion of the value of international education and international understanding. A commitment grounded in the vision of our founders. It is also a commitment grounded in the work of Herbert H. Lehman, whose name our college bears. Herbert Lehman was a former senator, a former governor, of our state who played a key role at the United Nations, serving as Director General of the United Nations Relief and Administration Agency from 1943 to 1946. Following his tenure as the 45th Governor of our state, as some of you probably know, some of the initial meetings of the United Nations Security Council were held on the grounds of Lehman College. It was Herbert Lehman who noted in one of his many speeches as follows, and I quote, it is immigrants, it is immigrants who brought this land, the skills of their hands and brains, to make of it a beacon of opportunity and hope for all men, and I might add all women. That very statement from the person whose name our institution bears is a testament to the work that our institution continues to do today on behalf of those who seek opportunity and access. For more than 50 years, for more than 50 years, our institution has remained a national engine of access and opportunity, serving all racial groups, all ethnic groups, immigrant groups, all socioeconomic groups. We have remained a vital community of teachers, of learners, of scholars and activists at the crossroads of a promise dedicated to an ideal etched in stone by our founders of working together to enrich the human spirit and offer to as many as could realize their potential the opportunity to be so enriched. Tonight we pause, we pause to honor some of those teachers, some of those learners, scholars and activists devoted to this work of access and opportunity, and in so doing, enriching the human spirit. T.J. English, the New York Times best-selling author and journalist. Marie Marianetti and Yuri Gorokovich, professors at Lehman College. Jack Morer, director of the Child Care Center at our institution and Cyril Njikeng, Executive Director at CUNY University Student Senate. Let's give these wonderful individuals who are making a world of difference a warm round of applause. Last June, I was extremely delighted I was extremely delighted to join a faculty-led study abroad program to Cuba. 
The 16-member team from Lehman College included three faculty members, Dr. Teresita Levy, who led the team, Dr. Bertrad Ngonjigol Banun, African and African American Studies, and Dr. Vani Cannon, who is also from the Department of English, along with the Deputy to the President, Ms. Gladys Muldoon, accompanied by 11 students from across our college's schools, two Cuban educators, formerly with the University of Havana, who served as a team's travel guide during the visit. They joined the group. It was a great educational and cultural experience. It was an opportunity for me to engage with our students as they immersed themselves in a rich learning journey. And some of those students are here with us this evening. The team visited many places of interest. They went to Old Havana. They went to the Museum of the Revolution, housed in the old presidential palace in Cuba, a palace occupied by Fulgencio Batista before his overthrow by Fidel Castro in 1959. The Museum of Africa to explore the contributions of slaves and other peoples of African descent on Cuban culture, including Cuba's current relations with Africa, the shrine of the Afro-Cuban deity Yamaya, and Playa Guerrion in Mantezas province. About three hours, we drove from Havana. The battle sites, the battle sites of the Bay of Pigs invasion. Lehman faculty engage students in debriefing sessions at the end of each historical site visit, focusing on culture and identity, focusing on the institution of slavery, given that Cuba, Cuba was a major distribution point during the transatlantic slave trade. They learned about the role of religion and religious institutions in Cuban life, about Cuban architecture and public spaces, about Cuban music and dance, the Cuban Revolution as well, and about U.S.-Cuba re relations, relations that have been on a thorough for almost 50 years. It was a study abroad program rich in lessons, rich in lessons for advancing global education as well as intercultural and international understanding. And for several of our students, it was the first time, it was the first time they had traveled out of the United States. Had a marvelous time with them, with discussions over lunch and dinner, and during our bus travels throughout Havana and parts of the island outside of Havana, and I took the opportunity to respond to questions from them about the role of the provost at an academic institution, as well as explain what other members of the college leadership team do, the vice president, deans, and department chairs, some of them in our audience tonight, to advance Lehman's mission and support student success. A number of the students also offered recommendations on improving access to support services and on curricular innovations, especially with general education, as well as suggestions to better inform students about how the college functions to advance student success and social mobility. It was a meaningful trip, as I have shared with others, as the students and I got to know each other, and they felt supported by our college. I was in Cuba for four days, but it was a very meaningful four days. And of course, at the end, the rest of the team, led by Dr. Levy, remained behind to continue their travels to other parts of the island that included such cities as Cifungos, Trinidad, and Camagüey. As a college, as a college, we have committed ourselves to providing opportunities for study abroad and for student mobility. The annual report on study abroad and student mobility at Lehman shows the following exciting numbers for our college for last year. 
126 students traveled out of the country for study abroad programs up from 119 in academic year 17, 18, and 54 the prior year 17 and 18. Our students, and check this out, our students went to 24 countries. They went to Argentina, Indonesia, Brazil, South Africa, China, Costa Rica. They went to Cuba, Czech Republic. They went to Denmark, England, France, Ghana, Greece, India, Ireland, Italy, Japan. They went to Jordan, the Netherlands, Russia, Singapore, South Korea, Spain, and Thailand. 23 of them received Gilman Awards. Gilman Awards, financial awards, up from 11 the prior year to support their study abroad experiences. 28 of them received the Chancellor's Award, up from 16 the prior year. This past year, 37 of our students traveled abroad for service learning. And plans, as I understand, are underway for some of our Lehman students to travel to Puerto Rico for home rebuilding efforts. And I met two students this evening that will be going to Kenya in summer for educational development in that country. This year, as you heard from Amanda, we completed our first year of the Peace Corps prep program, becoming the first institution of any in the city of New York to do so. What we have seen is that many of our students want to study abroad. And they are willing to do the work to get there. The numbers are a testament to the work of our faculty and staff who seek these opportunities and do the hard work of coordinating and leading our students. Let's give them a warm round of applause. Last semester, I charged an eight-person committee with the task of exploring ways through which our college could expand its international and service footprints while strengthening our partnerships, increasing opportunities for study abroad and study away, increasing the number of matriculated international students at Lehman, and I've met some of them already tonight, that are international students, and enhancing revenue opportunity for the institution. As a result of the recommendations made by this committee, we consolidated all of the offices that handle international programs into one single unit, now called, as Amanda mentioned to you, the Office of International Programs and Community Engagement. The new unit assumes the responsibilities of the Center for Global Engagement, the Office of International Students and Scholars Office and, and, Scho and Scholar, and the Office of Community Engagement. Dr. Teresita Levy, who will serve as a director of the Center for Global Engagement, is now the executive director of this consolidated unit, which also reports uh, to the provost's office. It is this office, this Office of International Programs and Global and Community Engagement, that has organized tonight's Global Citizenship Gala. This is a sixth annual gala. An event began in 2013 as a fundraiser to benefit and support our students who yearn to learn to study abroad. I want to thank all those who purchased tickets tonight to come here. I want to thank our corporate sponsors, Acacia Network, the Office of the President. Let's give them a round of applause. I also want to thank Villa Baron Mano. Evergreen Promotions, the School of Continuing and Professional Studies at Lehman, and other silent donors. And the silent donors are listed on the back of your program. Tonight's gala should not be the end of the support. Think of the impact your support makes in the lives of our students. 
and in promoting intercultural and international understanding. Think of the students that I traveled to Cuba with to learn about social movements and agency. Think of the investigative work TJ English has done about Mexico in support of Mexican journalists and how that work could inspire our own students to think of doing similar work in defense of the freedoms we cherish in our country. Think of those students who traveled to Greece with Professors Marianetti and Gorokovic to learn about the birthplace of Western democracy. Think of those who went to the 24 countries I mentioned earlier, and those going to Kenya. Think of the many more students that we could send to other places if we can only provide and continue to provide support to this program. In supporting our students, you will be joining a vital community of teachers, of learners, of scholars, and activists at a crossroads of a promise, as I mentioned before, dedicated to an ideal etched in stone by our founders of working together to enrich the human spirit and offer to as many as could realize their potential the opportunity to be so enriched. Thank you so much, and may God continue to bless you. Thank you so much. One more round of applause for Dr. Wosu. So at the end of his speech, Dr. Wosu mentioned the students going to Kenya, and um, it is an honor once again to welcome up Carter Vaya, who is the founder and executive director of Crossing Thresholds, um, who started Crossing Thresholds in, what, 2007, traveling to Kenya and taking groups of students, and we have um, become eternally grateful to his work. So Carter, please come up. I know most of you might be done with your salads by now, but let's get a little blessing. So uh, we live in a world that is marked by dramatic and ugly contrasts. People who have uh, way much more than they need and people who do not have what they need. And in that divide we find racism and we find classism and we find sexism. And so I'm grateful to be associated with Amanda, with Lehman College, with the visionaries and the activists who stand in that divide and who provide some kind of bridge. And the only prayer that really matters is a prayer that understands the world that we live in understands what we should celebrate and understands everything else. So let's pray in that spirit. God, they say that you are in and over everything. They say that you stand for beauty and goodness and abundance. So on this night of celebration, may we continue to fret and worry over those who are underserved. May you make us angry where justice has not been served. May you frustrate us and inspire us in places where equality does not exist. But then allow us to see the beauty. Allow us to see the opportunity. 
Allow us to be grateful for what has been done in and through this institution, what will be done in and through this institution, and the option for inspired activism that is always and forevermore an option. We are grateful that you are in and over everything. Amen. Thank you so much, Carter. <clears throat> There's something special about a Lehman College student. I started at Lehman in April of 2007 with the intention of staying for about five years, max. I remember it like it was yesterday because it was the day of the Virginia Tech school shooting. And the dean at the time looked at me and he said, well, welcome community service lady, do something. And so I put out a call and I worked at a very prestigious institution that used to talk about service all the time, but the students never really acted on it. And so here it is, my first day at Lehman College and I send out an email to the entire campus and I say, if you'd like to be in solidarity with us and with your brothers and sisters at Virginia Tech, please come to the office tomorrow, 12 o'clock. I reserved a conference table that maybe sat 10 people and 140 students showed up. <clears throat> it's been 12 plus years since I started at Lehman. So that five-year thing kind of went out the window. I don't really plan to go anywhere yet. With 36 Lehman Life trips, thousands of hours of community service, and millions of dollars saved to community organizations and student resources, 154 study abroad locations, all under our belt, we look forward to meeting the next challenge that Provost Wosu has instilled upon us of increasing our international student population to 3% and continuing to produce quality programs for extraordinary students. And that is why we do this gala every year, because we are just amazed by the opportunities of our extraordinary students. So I'd like to take a moment to Watch our video, or show our video. It's very brief, but it just gives you a little bit of an insight into who a Lehman College student is. So if you could turn your attention, I'm looking over here like there's a screen, right? I'm pointing over here. If you could turn your attention to the screens here, we'd like to give a little presentation prepared by our multimedia department at Lehman College. I never thought that as an undocumented student, I would be advocating for immigrant rights. I never thought I would go to Puerto Rico and help rebuild after a major natural disaster. I never thought that I would travel across the world and connect so deeply to a culture and group of people as I did in St. Petersburg, Russia. I never thought that I would have the opportunity to work with Lima Life to develop my first early childhood center nonprofit organization in Brooklyn. I never thought that I'd ever get the chance to visit and walk through one of the oldest cities in Europe, Knossos, on the island of Crete. I never thought that I would be like my friend, Danya Locke, who was the last person to hold Mandela's rugby scorecard from his imprisonment during apartheid. I never thought I would have the responsibility of educating kids in Kenya. Never would I have imagined that my time with Lehman Life would have led me to Peace Corps, Guatemala. With your support, these are just a few examples of what our Lehman College students have been able to accomplish throughout the world. 
through experiential learning opportunities, such as Lehman Life alternative breaks and study abroad, your support has helped to equip students with the knowledge and skills necessary to compete in a global workforce. Thank you. So that last piece about because of your support, these amazing students are able to get these incredible opportunities. We're gonna take a little break, but before we do that, I'm gonna tell you all the many ways you can give back even more this evening. You may have dabbled a bit in our silent auction already. Apparently there are some very hot items. Uh, Queen Rose's Coquito seems to be a big hit. The bruisey brunch donated by the Bronx Beer Hall for five seems to also be going over quite well. And um, I think Victor said the paintings that are hail straight from Guatemala that um, Sandra Cortez, our assistant director, got when she went there and she's donated them and they're done by local artisans, as well as some handmade person, purses by an artist in Camagüey. So those are just a few of the items that you can bid on. So please feel free to do so. We're gonna close the bidding at the end of the program and we will announce when the closing is going to be, but get to bidding. Those of you who were here last year, remember the global balloons that we had? Do you remember those? You don't see any balloons, right? That's because we have glow sticks. <laughs> so if you donate $5 or more, Sandra's holding up a lovely glow stick that you can wear as a necklace or bracelet to match your fabulous outfits this evening. You can either choose two, and those of you who are assigned to the dip jars, this is your, your time to go get them. We've got lovely dip jars that make it so easy to just drop your credit card in and take it right back out. You can also go on your phone if you don't even want to leave your seat. You can go right to lehman.edu slash global gala. Donate there, show your receipt to one of our glow stick people and get a lovely glow stick. There's also an option for you to pay to play and give a request to the DJ for the low, low price of $5. Of course, we put a dip jar at the bar. Always a good spot. And you can also give cash checks, anything you want, we take it all. And if you need any help, you can ask any of our Lehman Lifers or ourselves. We're gonna have a brief break while they continue to prepare your meal, and then we'll call you when dinner's ready. So help yourself to the bar, to the auction, get some glow sticks, and have a blast. <laughs> My eyes wide with wonder and admiration, and I say, in my best teenager meeting the rock star voice, oh my God, you are the author of Havana Nocturne. I love your book. <laughs> so TJ graciously laughed and smiled, and he shook my hand and was so generous that he allowed me to pester him the rest of the night and ask him a thousand questions about his book and his current and future research. The whole night, I'm not joking, the whole night, you can ask him. To this day, I am mortified about this, but I am so grateful that we met. His work has inspired my own. I have learned from him that storytelling needs to be as complex as the humans that are the actors of them that there is deep responsibility when studying and attempting to understand parts of the world outside of our own, whether this is the criminal underworld that he writes so much about or Tijuana in Mexico. I have shared these lessons with my students and their experiences and mine abroad have been richer because of them. TJ, for your work to bring attention to the plight of journalists in Mexico, for your painstaking research for your eloquent and beautiful storytelling about our world, we are privileged to present you with this Global Impact Award. 
TJ English, everybody. I am leaving you in really good hands. Please give a round to TJ again. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm known primarily as someone who writes about crime, organized crime, the criminal underworld, the criminal justice system. In the commercial marketplace, the term that is used to describe what I do is true crime. But that's not a term that I use or am very, uh, or like very much. I believe that what I do as an author and as a journalist is to investigate and tell stories that involve social history or contemporary situations of people operating on the dark side of capitalism. Most of the time, these are people who start out from a position of limited power the dispossessed. There are those among the dispossessed who seek to manipulate the levers of power, to get over on the system in the interest of their tribe or their people or purely for themselves. This is how the mafia was born. It is in fact how all criminal gangs come into being. There are of course uh, victims of this process often innocent victims, people who get killed, murdered, and corruption at all levels of the political and economic system is the emollient that greases the wheel. The level at which this activity takes place is what I refer to as the underworld. There is an underworld in virtually every country on this planet. And there is an international underworld where many nefarious forces intersect in the name of greed, colonization, subjugation, and the lust for power. The underworld runs parallel to the upper world, which is the world we see on television or on the internet or in the print media. The upper world is, carefully, is a carefully constructed world we are meant to see. The underworld is below the surface. It's the world we do not see, at least not on a daily basis. It is often decades or more before we become aware of events in the underworld and how those events have shaped our lives. Writing about the criminal underworld is a challenge. People involved in organized crime do not normally want to talk openly about what they do. They may even interpret the interest of a writer or a journalist snooping around asking questions as a threat to their existence. The big problem for writers or journalists is that the forces of the underworld are so intrinsically intertwined with the upper world that it is the system itself, the government, that is threatened by the truth. In the world today, more journalists are killed doing their job than at any time in the last 100 years. Look at Russia, where the secret police are trained in the art of assassination of journalists. Or the Philippines, where journalists are set up by the government to be murdered. Or the United States, where the president has declared that the media are the enemy of the people. Some years ago, while covering the narco war in Mexico for a national magazine, I sought to do more than just write about the situation in Ciudad Juarez, in the US-Mexican borderland, where violence had brought the region to the brink of social collapse. Mexican journalists covering the narco war for their newspapers or websites or TV outlets were being violently intimidated or murdered at an alarming rate. These murders were be being carried out not only by gangsters and narcos, 
but also by corrupt police, and in some cases, by the Mexican military. Journalists were being forced to flee Mexico with their families and seek political asylum here in the United States. After returning from Ciudad Juarez and writing my article for the magazine, I felt that, there, that this here was a situation where more was needed than just words. Myself and a group of concerned citizens created something we called the Irish-Mexican Alliance. At the time, I was president of an arts organization known as Irish American Writers and Artists. We used that organization as the basis for our initiative to call attention to the plight of journalists covering the narco war in Mexico and the US. In a series of events in New York and in El Paso, Texas, we staged fundraiser events for the Committee to Protect Journalists, which had established a legal fund to aid Mexican journalists who were in danger and seeking asylum in this country. These events were a display of cross-cultural solidarity. We had Irish and Latino music, Celtic and Chicano poetry, speakers from a multicultural diaspora, and of course, there was also plenty of Guinness and Tecate flowing throughout the evening. As we said at the time, you didn't have to be Irish or Mexican to be a part of the Irish-Mexican Alliance. It was meant to exist as a symbol of cross-cultural solidarity, the belief that there is a human connection that is more important than nation states, more powerful than national identity, and that this human connection is where solidarity and political action can take place and bring about social change. I believe that spirit is what we are here to honor tonight. I thank you for singling me out for this honor. I'm humbled and I pledge to you that through my work, I will continue to bring attention to these issues and I hope to see you out there on the front lines. Thank you very much. Hi, just a reminder, there's a few more minutes for the silent auction. My name is Frida Fernandez, and it is an amazing honor for me to introduce Marie Marianetti, associate professor and chair of the history department in study abroad. Marie was born in Athens, Greece, and she came to the United States to pursue higher education. She is an educator trained in classics and the history of the ancient world. And she has been teaching in the Department of History at Lehman College for the last 25 years. She leads students in the program in Crete, Greece, where students experience Bronze Age settlements of the Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations. Professor Marianetti gifted me with a once in a lifetime experience. She introduced me to the ancient world and it was mesmerizing to see her eyes light up every time we visited a site because I could tell how much it means to her. I value tremendously and it marked my life the opportunity of visiting the ancient sites and also learning from her. I am impressed by her passion for history and also her extensive scholarly journey because she never gave up. She always pushed herself in every environment to succeed. I look forward to keep learning from her and I know I gained a confidence for life and I will be forever thankful. Please come up to accept your award. Please come up to accept your award. I will also like to introduce the amazing Yuri Gorokovich, Associate Professor of the Department of Earth, Environmental, and Geospatial Sciences. Yuri is a geologist with broad interest in natural hazards, archaeology, 
and sorry, Yuri is a geologist with broad interest in natural hazards, archaeology, and, ge and geology, to name a few things. He graduated from Odessa University in Ukraine and worked as a coastal geologist on the Black Sea coast of Ukraine before immigrating to the United States in 1989. Yuri authors 33 peer-reviewed publications in international journals and conducted grant-supported research in almost every continent. With Judy, I got to hike probably the highest mountain in Crete. He took me and my classmates to very beautiful places where I was shocked by the beauty of nature. He took me to places I never even dreamed of visiting, and he taught me the importance of archaeology, geology, and nature. He definitely left a mark in my life, and I hope many more students get to experience the world alongside an amazing professor like him. Yuri, you will, you will forever be in my heart. Thank you, and please come up to accept your reward. Good evening. My name is Kwamisha Marino. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Lehman Life was first introduced to Jackie Maurer in 2009 when she and Amanda accompanied a group of students to Kenya to work with Crossing Thresholds. They went in partnership with grassroots leader Agnes Musa to develop education programs and build their first primary school in the Kiberia slums. Since then, we have a lot to appreciate Jackie for. Lehman Life has been to Kenya four times as a team, three of which Jackie served as an advisor. We will make our first return trip in seven years this June. We met Felix in Africa. Not only is he married to Amanda, but he's a teacher at the Lehman College's Child Center, a master's student at Lehman, and he's running the NYC Marathon for the third time to raise funds for Lehman Life with Professor Christopher Bonastia and two other athletes not here today. Jackie supported every single Lehman Life event. Jackie serves on the advisory committee for Lehman Life as well. It is because of all this and more that I present the award for a distinguished admin to Jackie Mower. Hello. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. So my name is Aziz Akwayemi Alami. I am a Nigerian studying social work and finance, and I'm here to speak a little bit about Cyril Nijikane. So a little backstory. So Cyril grew up in the Sunni CUNY system, as we call it. He obtained his associate degree from Westchester Community College before transferring to the glorious, wonderful Lehman College. His engagement in Lehman Life Honduras in 2020, um, 2014 helped shape who he is as a community advocate and leader that we see today. Not only did Cyril graduate from Lehman with his bachelor's degree in multimedia and television studies, he also started his own nonprofit and called it the Sister Cares Foundation in Cameroon. He went on to obtain his master's degree in film from City College, where he served as the, student stu the, the graduate student government president. And now, everything he has brought everything full circle, as he is now the executive director of Un University Student Senate, 
and CUNY Central, of which I am proud to be a, pr pr a proud to be a part of. <laughs> you know, usually on the weekends you will find Surreal in the Bronx cleaning up the streets of the Bronx with, that which he loves. But this weekend, you would find that me and a several other students will be with Surreal this Sunday, helping to clean up the neighborhood of Lehman itself. Thank you. Yes. So it is my honor to present Surreal Jacquin with the Award for Alumni Humanitarian of the Year. So please give a warm welcome to Surreal. Wow, look how tall Aziz is. I had to bring that down like three feet. <laughs> All right, friends, the time has come. It is 8.45. Do we want 30 more seconds to make your final bids? People are saying yes. All right, I'm gonna get out my little Google timer here. We'll go 60 seconds. Only because it's gonna take me a second to find my timer. <clears throat> okay, stopwatch. We're gonna go 60 seconds till the final silent auction bit. Look at look at look at Mwake running. <laughs> All right, ready? Starting now. Should we play like the, the marathon music or like the Rocky music or something? Dun 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 dun. dun. Wow, people are looking. Come on, here's your last chance to get a bid on a fabulous item. That coquito's going fast. Somebody, some, Sammy's taking his time walking over there. Sammy, you got 30 seconds, bro. Fifteen seconds. Ten. Count with me. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Lehman Lifers, get ready. Two, one. Close them. Woo! Closing bids lifted. All right, friends, before we call Teresita up for some closing remarks, we have one special group of students that we want to recognize this year. So if I could have your attention for one moment, because I don't want you to be missed if you're a student. But there's a special time at the end of this year This is a special moment, friends. There is a special time at the end of each year called graduation, which many of the students in this room will experience this year. Woo woo. So what I'd like to do, and Teresita and I would like to award our Lehman Lifers, any Lehman Lifer, past or present in the room that is graduating either December, January, or the summer to come up and receive your honors cords. So can all of our seniors who are graduating come up and receive your cords? Come on up. Let's give them a big round of applause. They've worked hard, friends.
All right, now that Teresita has handed out the Lehman Life Chords, any graduating senior who has participated in study abroad or Peace Corps prep, come up and get your awards, your chords. Or my Crete people. There's a few of them that are double and triple, so. <laughs> And we'll just take a brief photo. One more round of applause. Some of you, it took a while, but we're happy that it's happening. And you are graduating, and we will see you in May. So each year, there's a team of people who work tirelessly behind the scenes to put this gala on. <clears throat> so to the staff, our new team, of international programs and community engagement, Teresita, Sandra Cortez, Jenny Landsman, Victor Rajkumar, Amber Ramirez, Akua Duodu, Unice Cuevas, and Lucy de Almeida. Thank you. Please give them a huge round of applause. They have worked their buns off the past few weeks. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, another group that works tirelessly behind the scenes every single year is the Lehman Life Advisory and Gala Committee. So can I please have anyone on the Lehman Life Advisory and Gala Committee to please stand? So Tara, um, Jackie, Chris. There's a bunch of people in here. Leslie, Danielle. Thank you for up. Oh, yes, Nancy, who's hiding over there. Faith, thank you so much. Because without you, this would not be possible. We also have fabulous giveaways before you go home. So we have to say a huge thank you to Evergreen Promotions. If anybody needs promotions in their office, I promise I would say their name. Um, they have donated fabulous mugs this year. And thank you to Leslie Lehman for the idea. Because this year you actually go home with a sense of what you donated to. Because the mugs have all the pictures of the students' work that we've been doing. So thank you for everything. <clears throat> thank you to ESU, Entertainment Sounds Unlimited, who are our music providers, our media people for the evening, our announcers. Thank you so much. Um, and I would be remiss if I did not recognize our awesome New York City marathoners. So every single year, we get a bunch of Lehman volunteers. So can I hear all our Lehman marathon volunteers out there? Because I know you're going to be out there. Oh, yeah. These people are going to be out in the cold on November 3rd, handing out water for 48,000 runners. They don't have to run the marathon, thank goodness. But because they volunteer, we actually get three bibs from New York Roadrunners, and we are allowed to be a charity partner through them. So three to four runners every single year run the marathon and raise money for Lehman Life and community, and community engagement and study abroad students. So I just want to point out, I know he's my husband, but I have to point him out. Felix Mwake is running it for his third time fundraising. And those of you that know and love Professor Christopher Bonastia in the corner over there, he's running the marathon for us too. Yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> 
So we'll all be out there cheering for them. Those of us that are out there on November 3rd, think about us if you're not, because it's going to be cold and we're going to be wet with Gatorade and water. It's a good time. And not to scare anyone off. And finally, thank you to my family who put up with me being a 40-year-old pregnant woman who's working on a doctorate in a new job and raising a toddler. So thank you to my husband and my family. You guys make it all worth it. The students make it worth it. And what I'm going to do right now is go tally up those silent auction bids and ask Teresita to come up and provide some closing remarks. So let's welcome back to the podium Teresita Levy. I promise I will be brief. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your time with us tonight. Yeah? Awesome. If you haven't, then you should walk to the bar. <laughs> and if you have, you should walk to the bar. <laughs> so I want to, if I can just get everybody's attention, I promise to be done in three minutes. Thank you. So this gala, like Amanda said, is, is truly a team effort. Our Office of International Programs and Community Engagement has been hard at work for several months preparing the program, inviting guests, selling tickets, soliciting donations, making seating charts. Have you ever made a seating chart? Oh my goodness gracious. All while carrying out the duties of our office, which continues to operate, seeing an average of 50, 100 sweating students, 100 students a day. I work with an amazing group of people who I have come to deeply respect and love. My life is better because of them. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank Sandra Cortez, Victor Rajkumar, Jenny Landsman, and Amber Ramirez for their dedicated work and endless energy. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. <laughs> What can I say, right? Thank you, thank you for your passion, for your commitment, your advocacy, your hard work, and your humanity. We couldn't do it at all without you. We are here tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of our students that take a risk, that decide to take a step into the unknown, to spread their wings and literally fly away. Our internationalization work is not about traveling, although mm, that's an obvious part of it. Our students do much more than visit a different country while they are abroad. They learn skills while they are abroad. They become more flexible, culturally aware, sensitive to different ways of life and social realities. They're able to solve problems generously, negotiate with tact and skill, and they take care of each other. These are the real life skills that our students learn when they participate in our programs, and they are skills that we know employers want and that our global society needs. In short, they become global citizens. I have had the privilege to lead students to Cuba for the last, last two years in a row. I have seen their eyes full of wonder as I try to answer their never-ending questions. I have witnessed the love and respect that they feel for the Cubans they have met and worked with. I have been impressed, impressed with their confidence, their smiles in the face of difficulty and their unwavering commitment to be successful. I love you deeply, and I thank every student that has ever gone abroad for their trust in us. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my two sons, Ari and Ilan, And when we get in the car, they're gonna say, Mom, I can't believe you did that. Um, they have put up with my travel schedule, which is not easy. 
um, and a thousand other things. So thank you both. I love you both. Your donations tonight and tomorrow and maybe the night after help us provide these experiences for our students, better preparing them to meet the needs of the marketplace when they leave us and really fly away to make their mark on our world. Thank you, obrigado, merci, arigato, gracias. I would like to invite Amanda to join me again on the, at the podium to announce the winners of the silent auction. Thank you. Who do we have? Okay. A case of wine. Yes. Go. So our first winner for our first prize, oh, let me just announce how it's gonna happen. So we're gonna announce the item, who won it, and how much you paid. You have two ways to pay. You can either go on your phone to lehman.edu slash global gala and make it through the donation page there. And then you're gonna go out to the cocktail area where we started and claim your prize and make your payment. If you haven't done it on your phone, there are computers there where you'll be able to make your payment and get a receipt. So basically we'll announce it, we'll tell you how much, and then you're gonna go across to next door and either show your receipt that you paid it on your phone or you can pay it right there, and Victor is making fancy packages of all the winning items right next door. So, our first winner for our fabulous case of wine goes to Roger Peach for $150, woo! And we should say that 100% of the proceeds of the silent auction is going directly to student scholarships, so thank you. Our two original works of art from Guatemala, thank you to Sandra Cortes, um, go to Yuri for $130. Lehman's autographed copy by author Dwayne Tannenbaum, Lehman College's own historian. He just left, oh, he signed it and everything. Is going for $40 to Faith DeVoe. And Faith said, I didn't do it, I'm sorry. Faith said, if Dwayne donated a book, I'd bid on that. And so, yay, you won. Oh, Boo at the Zoo, tickets for four, go to Ron Bo, Bow, Bow, sorry, for $60. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Oops. Oops. Our friends, oh yay! Our friends at the Bronx Beer Hall donated a boozy brunch, and that goes to Felix Mwake. You won it! Or should I say we won it? Wait, let me make sure. Yes, yes, we won it. For $190. Woo hoo! We really wanted a boozy brunch. It's gonna happen after the baby, though. These are two students donated all the, oh, okay. So there's a gift, there are three gift baskets that two former Lehman Life students who are still undergrads said, we wanna to donate to the silent auction. And they went out and made these adorable gift baskets and came in and donated them all by themselves. And they're so awesome. So thank you to Kimberly Molina and Frida Fernandez who you met earlier. Thank you so much ladies for your donations. So the first one goes to the spa basket, goes to Sammy Gonzalez for $40. Woo! Woo! The, second the second one, the movie treat tickets goes to Don Burgos for $40. Woo! The third one is the relaxation zen basket. Sammy, you are gonna be so chill because you won that one too. $35, woo! The Lehman College Bookstore Basket. Oh, wow, hold on, I have to flip the page. Um, goes to Karen and James for $110. Woo -hoo -hoo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Mary Kay, oh look, me too, yay. Mary Kay gift basket, clearly I like Mary Kay. It's a $50 spa gift certificate and um, that goes to moi for $20. 
This shows you how much help I had. I had time to bid at the silent auction. Um, the Turquoise Dreams necklace and earring set goes to Nadia Baba for $45. The second item, donated also by Zenaida Bao, handmade, the black and white dream necklace and earrings, goes to Troy Thompson for $30. The multicolor one-on-one -on -one necklace and earring, also donated by Zenaida, goes to Nancy Tortora for $35. The Indian necklace donated by Fahamida Hossein goes to Sienna Lebron for $25. Woo -hoo. Keep going. Okay. The Kingdom Choir gift set at the Performing Arts Center, tickets for two, goes to Andrea Pinnock for $50. Woo. Oh. Wow. oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's wait on that. Do, okay. Let me figure it out. Okay. The Troy Thompson, who is another former Lehman Lifer, now creates terrariums, and he donated one. A live 9x6 terrarium goes to... Sammy, you are racking them up, man. Sammy Gonzalez for $40. Our friends at Tortoise and Hare, right down the street from Lehman College, a lovely after-work spot, Donated a $100 gift certificate, and that goes to Jackie Maurer for $75. I want in on that happy hour in January. Ashley Falcone donated from her brother's dance studio, Caché, a $40 value gift certificate. It's a group dance class for beginners. And that goes to Joanne Santiago for $25. Ooh, I should have bid on this. Headshots, donated by the Lehman College Multimedia Center. It's a one-hour professional headshots. What do you call that? Shoot, photo shoot. And that goes to Kevin Brown for $60. Thank you, sir. You want to go for that one? Or you want to? Yeah. Tiffany, keep going. Yeah. Oh, okay. The Holiday Train Show donated by the New York Botanical Garden. If you've never been, it's amazing. And that goes to Tiffany James for $70. Woo. Handcrafted earrings, five sets, also donated by Zenaida Bao, goes to Antonio Fernandez for $40. Woo! The winner of the TJ English autographed book and photograph goes to Michael Max Nobby from BronxNet. Woo! For $50. The Touch of Moon Dust gift set goes to Elin Waring for $25. Okay. Okay. The From the Bronx gift set donated by the Ramirez brothers goes to Karen Beck for $95. And I know how much you wanted that, girl. Congratulations. Awesome. Okay, the handcrafted purses from Pavel Lopez from Cuba, from Camagüey. What I will do is I will read you the order that you will pick up your choice. Okay? So, Lynn Van Voorhees, number one, for $45. You get to go first. Yeah, you can clap. <laughs> Heidi Acevedo, you go second, for $40. Tiffany James. You go third for $35. Catherine, Catherine Angelet, Anglet, sorry. Yay, you go four, also for $35. Um, oh, Enusa Cueva, you go next. Then Max again, thank you, Max. And then there will be one left over and you can duke it out. And our hottest ticket item, the Coquito master herself, Rosemary Colon, thank you, 
Thank you for bringing some for tasting. Can we please give Rosemary a round of applause? She even brought samples. <laughs> Rosemary and her husband Marco are part of the Bronx Puerto Rican Day Parade, as is Jackie Acevedo, and last year they raised over $4,000 for our student scholarships to be able to travel to Puerto Rico and volunteer. So the winner of the fabulous Coquito by Rose, Queen Rose Coquito, is Michael De Jesus for $100. Woo! Now, please go claim your prizes across the hall. And guess what time it is, friends? It's time to party and dance. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.